Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to your IELTS class for today. Today it's going to be the uh, module we're going to pick up uh, probably listening today. And uh, uh, this class is provided by Sika and uh, this is free of the course class. Uh, there are no charges to attend the sessions here and there is no limitation to the number of classes you can attend. And uh, you can attend any number of the classes provided from Monday to Friday and the Melbourne time is 2 to 4. That's where uh, when the classes uh, usually we run the session for the IELTS and then PT classes in the morning that is 10 to 12 Melbourne time. If anybody after PT preparation, then that's the platform you can avail the benefits of. And besides that, Nati CCL classes are also available. And they are for the four languages we're giving preparation for. Uh, the first being Hindi, the second is Punjabi, then uh, Urdu, and then Nepalese. So any four languages people, if they want to prepare their Nati for free without any charges, no hidden cost or anything, any uh, restriction on the number of classes. So those are the uh, different slots available on the Facebook page. And you can uh, go through the Facebook page, get your desired slot. I mean, desired stall as per the language. And uh, you can check out the days and the time and you can attend those sessions. It's simply just you have to follow the link and you'll be definitely into the class with the experienced trainers as well. And uh, the counseling sessions are free for the migration and uh, education. And especially if you are after Canada immigration, then uh, ultimately we're providing the eligibility check for free as well. And the counseling is uh, also free for the Canada migration. If uh, anybody after the, that particular advice, then you can avail that value benefit as well. The conversion of visitor to student service is also provided with a uh, uh, great number of the successful cases. And uh, also the scholarships with different universities available here in Australia and in a few looking for some other countries to study like the USA or Canada. So yes, those are also available with us and you can check those uh, particular things with us. And overseas health cover is also one of the service we're providing with different uh, overseas health cover providers. The lowest price possible we try to give you in the market. If you are about to change it, want to buy a new one, you can check the quote with us and see uh, if that works for you. And hopefully that definitely 100% works. And the number here on the screen uh, is the one you can call 0396631318. Uh, that's the number you can call for your queries in regards to any of the services I'm mentioning here. And uh, uh, today class, as I told you, it will be the listening. So, okay, so the first session we'll do listening, like we'll be doing one listening. And uh, definitely it will be going to over by three or three, five, right? And after that, we'll be continuing uh, with one uh, letter draft like how we can draft letters, right? So this is how uh, today we will be continuing with the class. So it will be letter and the listening. So if you are after letter, you can join back at three as well. But if you want to go with the listening as well, so you can keep continuing doing listening as well with me, which we will be soon starting within five minutes. So just give me a second, please. All right, 
So one quick review of the listening. Uh, it will be taking around only five ten minutes. So the listening, it is all same, whether academic, whether general. And uh, we got four section in divided uh, with the 40 question containing 10 in each section. The first two section, it will be of the social context. The next three and fourth section, it will be of the academic context. So the talk, the conversation, uh, the uh, the pieces of the information shared in those uh, particular first two section and last three section is different. Like first two, there will be the journal content. The second, uh, the last uh, two, there will be more of academic sort of conversation in regards to the study, education, or any particular presentation uh, delivered by the lecturers or the uh, industry people so, so that sort of academic conversation uh, number of speakers for the first two speakers for the second one speaker three three to four speakers and section fourth again it's only one speaker so this is the number of speaker you will be hearing to in different uh, sections and total length is 30 minutes for the audio like say 28 to roughly 30 but yeah 30 as we say it and in the cbt you will be having two minutes to check your answer so there is no time to actually type your answer or you are doing it on some rough notepad and then you are noting them down this is not going to happen in cbt it's only two minute time you will be having some time it just like um, you know, you got three as well, depending on the uh, test day circumstances uh, inside the trust uh, center. But take it as like two minutes for the checking of your spellings, like whether you answered every question and uh, you marked as per you thought the answer is. And if any punctuation to be followed, then yes, everything you will be checking in those 10 minutes. And uh, you hearing the recording once and uh, definitely this is not about pen and paper in the CBT, but if it's a paper based exam, so certainly use a pencil, not a pen. So you can erase the wrong spelling, wrong punctuation. If you uh, mess up with the sequence of the answer on the answer sheet, take for headphones for sure. If not working, change them. You can change their number of time till the time you're not finding the suitable pieces. But yes, there should be a problem for changing that. If they're working well, they're not going to change that. And uh, scores are calculated by the correct answer. So any answer which is not uh, right, it will be zero mark. Every answer which is right, it will be one mark. Just in case uh, you're not sure about an answer, just write something you feel most probable is. Because if it's get right, just in case, if it's a lucky, lucky day, you'll be getting one mark. There is no negative marking in the IELTS and not in the reading as well. So all the answers, if you're preparing for paper-based exam, must be in the capitals. Like the that's the pattern I recommend to follow to write or type your answer in both reading and listening if you are pairing for a paper based exam. But if you're pairing for the computer based test, then ultimately uh, you are if you are typing any answers, it will be auto capitalized in the listening and reading uh, when you selecting answer or maybe typing some, you can simply follow the style they are written in the reading passage. And uh, uh, definitely look for the instruction, how many words or number you can write your answer in. If you are not uh, incoherent with those instruction, your answers are not, uh, you know, appropriate as per those instruction. So your answer won't be marked right. Maximum three, that means one, two, three. Maximum two, that means only one or either two words, right? Maximum, uh, or it's like only one word. So only one word is required. If even if you write a, oh, that will be considered one word. Every word number is counted. Uh, it's not like that article not gonna counted up proposition or any anything you are putting before the proper noun. It's not counted. No, every word is counted. Every number is getting counted as per the instruction. So uh, the preposition, if this is a question where we have a sentence completion sort of and it required to be written with the preposition, the noun itself. And uh, if instruction allowing that, you're doing it. If instruction not allowing that and um, it is saying only one word, then you are ignoring that. So don't worry about much or worry about the prepositions and the listening answers. And uh, spellings are very important. Punctuation is again important. And that what I told you, like what is the difference between uh, paper and CBT for the punctuation and definitely there is no uh, difference for the spelling, but for the punctuation. These are the type of the question we'll be doing in the listening, right? So like uh, this is how generally the question you will be looking in mostly 
uh, the form note note completion table flow chart summary completion question plan map or diagram label, labeling in the part 2 matching part 3 and um, uh, yes the mcq also in the part 3 and then the sentence completion summary completion or short answer question they can be in part 4 right so this is the division of the question as well and type of the question you will be having in your uh, listening exams so you don't have to understand each and every thing they are in conversation uh, obviously sometime even if we don't get the proper meaning of that and it is not related to your question asked so don't worry about it much the main target the focus should be on finding answer to the question and what are the question where there is you getting a numeric number from 1 to 40 those are your question so you should be knowing that what are my question in this section and according to that you'll be focusing on that particular information obviously you are listening the whole talk only then you reaching to that specific area but in that whole uh, listening conversation uh, time if you are not understanding one or two phrases words in that and they're not related exactly to your answer so don't worry about them much and always plan out what type of answer you are after so how you going to decide that which wh you are looking for that mean if i say this question required me to write a place name so i'm after a where where wh right so place with so i'll be focusing my brain will be focusing more on the name of the places i'm hearing in this piece of conversation just like that if i'm looking after what activity so wh is what here so that's like already i am focusing on activities in the talk so always prepare your question before when you got 20 second time 30 second time that we called check your answer or sort of thing so always go with the next question look them what they what you are going to uh, find in them and what you are going to listen the conversation for plan them write the wh and then it will you will see it will be immensely helpful when you actually listening to the conversation there is no particular pattern of the answer in the recording so just like a routine conversation uh, the question are obviously based on that conversation but there is no particular uh, length of the time when you will be hearing the answer so the recording in the recording answer can be at a varied length maybe after two sentences five sentences 10 sentences you never know so there is no such particular parameter just like a normal routine conversations you all be hearing to definitely the focus should be on the keyword from the question because that is the word which will be telling us okay now this is the time i'm hearing my answer so as soon as i finish the last one keep an eye on the next one do not waste your time and uh, even though you feel like the spellings are lengthy maybe you abbreviate them in that moment and do the next question if they are saying answer to them quickly write that up or mark that up so when you have 2 minute time then you can correct your spelling so that just in case it got lengthy spelling and it require more time to type them make notes while listening for the question you not getting straight way answer for you got two possible option you write them as a notes you will be provided a separate area on the screen with the password and a login uh, there you can write your notes type your notes just in case you not sure at that very moment take notes so that even if you want to make a choice or even if you want to make a guess you must be having something to make guess from so that's comes the note handy so always do that so write few things if you're not sure about it okay this are the possible things because by the end of the talk if that is that question in the part 2 you won't be able to remember that conversation options as well so notes are helpful in those cases so answers that are changed is a common trap in the listening so what will happening you will be hearing a uh, three four option for a question that mean they are changing the answer so frequently suppose i am looking for a person uh, to be met for my uh, submission of assignment right suppose presentation assignment whatever you say and uh, there are you know different uh, uh you know people office uh, officer executive or maybe the people uh, uh they are naming okay to submit your assignment but yes i know that i'm an after a person uh, specific so it's like i'll be keep listening okay they saying about executive officer administrator and then they are also saying office assistant then they also talking about the lecturer in as associate lecturer so maybe whatever post they are describing in that that mean they are trapping me down they are changing the word which can be the possible answer so in that case keep listening 
keep listening till the end of that conversation and if you want to you can also write notes notes in the sense of whatever post you are hearing person specific you are hearing quickly make a short note of that right just in case by end of the talk you realize that the second time whatever they have mentioned is is it is the right answer so it's like by the notes you will be sure about okay this was what they have said there right sometime uh, when we are having a conversation by the end we realize that okay the name uh, taken at the second place that is the person i have to submit my assignment right so this is how we can easily cop up with trap uh, and uh, get the right answer and it is much used trap in the listening they keep on changing their statements but by the end of the conversation if you taking notes and you concentrating you are getting your answer and uh, use similar words in the recording as text and uh, what does it mean the normally the answers are paraphrased in the listening that mean they will be using synonym for saying the answer and for asking the question for the same answer they will be using some different words so synonym so if you getting same word in the recording same words in the uh, option you are looking at probably they are not the right answer they just trapping you down and uh, just in case you are concentrating more on that word only and in all that process what will be happening your focus should be removed from the real answer so this is very common trap again and if you feel like you hearing the same word and same word is the option probably this is not true this is not the right option so just listen very carefully answers are as i tell you normally paraphrase except section 4 right and that's not the case with every question in the section 4 but yeah only with the technical words or the vocabulary which is quite academic and then uh, repeating a word again and again doesn't confirm that this is going to be the right option maybe they try to distract you from the real answer that's why they focusing more on the answer which is not correct so this is again another trap in the listening so you hearing something quite repetitive and it is with the mcq suppose or it is with the matching the statement suppose so still uh, listen very carefully and understand are they trapping you down by focusing more on one word and leaving others maybe just uh, all the time they keep on taking the name of professor smith right but the real answer is uh, professor say states right so now what happened they just professor smith you have to submit your assignment to that and take the reference material for him and uh, he will be available blah 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 so it's all about the professor smith and that they say okay the essay need to be submitted to the professor uh, states and then um, the final uh, term results you will be receiving from the professor smith only so you see there is only one phrase with the professor states but that is where actually the answer is lying around that is the uh, option matching you have to pick up for your answer right so this is like they'll be locking lot about about one person maybe one place maybe one object maybe and in just in that conversation they added a simple phrase which actually our answer is or an answer based on we ignoring that because we more focused on professor smith description what he will be doing or what his role is how we have to submit the things to him maybe so this is a common trap in the section 3 of the listening so listen for plurals and singulars because just in case you ignore plurals and written answer in the singulars your answer won't be marked right it will be marked wrong any example they are playing if they are playing listen to that example very carefully because that will tell you the uh, accent of the examiner i mean the person in conversation and uh, definitely it will tell you the volume um, rate of speech as well like if it's going to be fast paced listening slow paced section or uh, and uh, what i said volume like if it's it is in a quite volume high volume or it's like uh, you know uh, the conversation in like uh, average volume so it's like you will be deciding how much concentration is needed to listen your answers carefully in this piece right and accents are completely different with the many of the recordings you will be listening to some british majorly a uh, few american and very less australian right so this is how the division of the accents you will be hearing to so obviously more you need to practice with the british and american pronunciation accents so you getting everything very easily obviously uh, not to forget the australian one you also can listen few listening in that particular accent or maybe any songs in that songs in american watch movies in british so it's like also understanding accent there are different certain ways which can be fun as well and you learning as well 
and in case of any plan map diagram process uh, table always look what they have written in the title title will tell you what it is showing what you are after what sort of words are can, words can be your answer because just looking at a random picture you can't decide what can be my answer till the time you're not going to heading of that so be sure to go to the headings of these uh, certain diagrams and uh, always look for where the your, where your questions are lying in this section prior to the recording start playing because otherwise you will be like finding okay what is my question here and in that time your concentration is diverted to finding the question and that uh, maybe something which is actually a sentence which is containing that answer it is like you ignored that because you keep on looking the number of question so better decide uh, look every question uh, prior to the listening recording starts playing that where there are okay after 13 here is the 14 after 14 here is the 15 so that you're not looking while listening because you will be ignoring few sentences phrases words which can be your probable answer missed something move quickly no fun to stay back there just in case you're doing that you're losing another two marks maybe so always move on with the speaker never stay anywhere because that don't going to help you it's not going to play again you cannot pause it you cannot stop it so there is no fun sticking to that question now and uh, section 4 technical academic language is never paraphrased not always paraphrased i would say so often complicated or difficult word are same as in the recording and text so then it is not a trap uh, they are not paraphrasing them they saying them actually in the same way so if there are any complicated or difficult word normally they don't paraphrase and that could be possibly case in the section 4 only and uh, pick your answer as it is in the recording they have said, they have said it because you changing the order of the answer you losing that mark and practicing with the tape scripts will help you a lot you can do the accuracy check you can uh understand the uh, pronunciation and related with the words you can check the spellings if you are writing right or not and if there has any difference in the spelling writing and uh, also this is like if you are reading them aloud so you are understanding uh, whatever the next time you will be hearing the recording you will be understanding in a much more better way because as we sing song along we understand that song better so this is the same strategy which works here as well Synonyms, synonyms are the inseparable part of the test. Uh, all the answers will be paraphrased uh, till section three. Only the few complicated, difficult word never change. But for every other answer, they will be having some synonym to say their answer. Like quite common synonym, not so difficult. I mean, I'm saying complicated, difficult, difficult word they don't give synonym for. So you understand it, right? So you don't have to worry about that factor. the simple word they change and we you generally get that if i say king daughter if i say princess you know that i'm referring to the same person that sort of uh, paraphrasing you will be viewing at and uh, definitely um, when you will be in the test zone before that give good practice because this is the one module where you can score 9 as well right and uh, i know the targets are 8 but this is the module if you are practicing in a better and in a accurate manner definitely nobody can stop at getting 8 easily and even the 9 as well as we just heard a result yesterday so check it twice be precise when you are submitting answer before that always look for these tiny looking errors but costing you the same number of uh, marks right singular plural unit mentioned or not according to that if not mentioned you must have to write that with answer if given then don't worry about it spellings for sure and how many words you can write as answer one word so it must be only the one word and just in case you got three word as your answer and you feel like now it allowing me only one word which word i must write and which word i drop so in that case the first choice always should be the noun right after noun if anything uh, if you there are, there is no noun and it is article or adjective maybe or something like that so obviously adjective right uh, and helping verb or verb maybe so obviously a verb right so whatever is bigger uh, um, you know in uh, position that what you will be picking but mostly the answer will be containing a noun any sort of right so when it is having a noun always if one word pick noun first then if there are two words and there is a adjective then pick adjective and leave the third word 
and normally which word to pick last in the three word set that is going to be your article preposition those sort of words right always noun verb first if according to whatever is there in the question then adverb or adjective maybe then is the turn, uh, turn of the preposition or a article so that should be uh, the way you will be picking your answer so yeah so these are the things now we will be going to the listening test straight away Oh, what is this? Okay. Just a second. Okay, this is again from the Cambridge series. So one to seven will be played in one uh, set and the another one will be three will be in another audio. I mean the same audio, but with the pause in after 20 seconds. That's generally how they play it. We'll hear a woman calling an insurance company to report an accident. First, you have some time to look at questions one to seven. You will see that there is an example which has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation relating to this will be played first. Rawlings Insurance, good morning, can I help you? Oh, hello. I'm ringing to report an accident. A car accident? Yes. Just hold the line a moment, please. I'm putting you through to our motor insurance department. The insurance company representative is putting the client through to the motor insurance department. So motor insurance has been written in the space. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to seven. Rawlings Insurance, good morning, can I help you? Oh, hello. I'm ringing to report an accident. A car accident? Yes. 
Just hold the line a moment, please. I'm putting you through to our motor insurance department. Hello? Hello? I understand you want to report an accident. Yes. My car's been damaged. Someone came out in front of me. Can I just check a few personal details before we go any further? Oh, yes, sorry. Your name, first of all. It's Elizabeth Rickard. Is that R-I-K-A-R-D? It's spelt with a C, not a K. Oh, okay. And your date of birth, please. It's the 8th of October, 1975. And lastly... I just need to check your address. Oh, actually, I moved house last month, so the street name's different. It's 60 Forest Road. I think you've got 22 Ash Avenue on your records. I have, so I'll just make a note of that. That's fine. And is that in the same town still, Callington? That's right. Right. Now, do you have your insurance policy in front of you? Yes, I do. Can you give me the policy number, please? It's at the top. Oh, yes. 50924? It's in a box. It should start with letters. Oh, CZ8809? That's the one. And now I want to ask you about the accident itself. Is that okay? Yes, that's fine. First of all, did it happen today? No, it happened yesterday evening. But by the time I got home, it was late, so I didn't call. That's not a problem. So, let's see. Today's the 13th of September, so it happened on the 12th. Is that right? It is. Do you know approximately what time the accident occurred? Uh, oh dear, I wasn't wearing a watch and I was a bit shocked. But I'd say it was between 8.15 and 8.45. That's okay. I'll just record that it happened at about 8.30. It doesn't matter exactly. And I don't suppose you've got any supporting evidence, have you? I mean, witness statements, that kind of thing. I don't have witness statements, I'm afraid, but I've got a police report. They came and measured up and checked the marks on the road. But unfortunately, nobody else was around at the time of the accident. Any hospital report? No. So I take it you don't have any medical problems then? Any injuries? Only minor ones. It was mainly the car that got damaged, luckily. Absolutely. But we do recommend that you have a checkup anyway, within 24 hours if possible. Yes, okay. I'll make an appointment today. Fine. And now, can you tell me what happened exactly? I'm going to make a few notes. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 8 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 8 to 10. I was driving home from the swimming pool and I... I don't know Callington at all, so could you describe it for me? Where did the accident happen? On the road between Newtown and Callington. I was driving from Newtown, heading towards Callington and... Okay, just let me draw the road layout. Right, okay. When you leave Newtown, there's a sharp bend in the road, and then there's a railway bridge. Okay. And then about half a kilometre further on, there's a crossroads with traffic lights. And I was just in between the two when it happened. I wasn't going very fast. In fact, I definitely... So stopped. you'd already gone over the bridge? Yes. And I passed the park... That's on the right-hand side. And I was just approaching the petrol station. Where's that, then? It's a bit further along, on the opposite side. So, on your near side, then? Uh, yes. As I was approaching it, I saw a blue van coming towards me. The driver had stopped in the middle of the road. Was he indicating? Yes. He was waiting to turn into the petrol station, but then at the last minute he decided to turn right in front of me. He must have thought he had enough time, but I had to swerve to avoid him, and I came off the road and landed in a ditch on the opposite side. Hmm. I don't suppose he stopped, did he? 
Oh, yes. He came over to see if I was okay, but he tried to say it was my fault, and there wasn't anyone... That is the end of section one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Send your answer in the chat box, please. The first answer here is Rickard. Rick, Rick, Rickard. That's what she said, Elizabeth Rickard. Then the spelling was R I C A R D. Firstly, he said R I K A R D, and then she corrected him that it's not with the K, it's with the C. Yeah. So the second answer to this one is 60 Forest Road. And uh, it's 6060. Road is not given there. Yeah, so we yeah. have to mention that as well. Okay. The third one is CZ8809, which is right. Fourth is 12 September. Yes, that's correct. And uh, fifth one is 8.30 p.m. or half past eight. That's yeah, correct. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, six is police report, not reports. So this is wrong. Seven is minor and injuries are given there. So you don't worry to write that. Minor is fine. Eighth is A. Eighth is not G. Oh, sorry. Eighth is G, not A. So G states here at Killington, you see. Oh, what she okay. was saying, Newtown, she was entering Sharp Bend. And on half a kilometer, there are the uh, there is a crossing with traffic lights. So G is traffic lights, right? Okay, yeah. And then where is the petrol station they mention? Uh, it's C, position C. Yeah. Car park and where actually the where he was trying to turn up into into petrol station. So C nine is C right? And tenth is a D, uh, the blue van which is parked and in the center of the road. So that D is the blue one. So these are the answers here. First record, 60 Forest Road, CZ8809, 12 September, 8.30 p.m. Police report, minor or minor injuries, G, C, and D. Cool. All right. 
Now let's see the second section. Okay, so this is going to be the section two and have a look on the question for a while. Then I'll play the audio. Now turn to section two. Section two. You will hear a woman talking on the radio about a project to conserve dormice in one area of the UK. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 14. Now listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 14. Good morning and welcome to our weekly program about countryside matters. With me today I have Jackie Lamerton. Jackie works for the nature organization Action for Wildlife and she's appealing for volunteers for a project she's organizing. So if you think you might be willing to help, please listen carefully. Jackie. Thank you. Yes, as you've just heard, I represent a charity called Action for Wildlife, which works to protect plants and animals. And I'm here today to talk about a project to save a type of mouse known as a dormouse. We can still find the dormouse in this area, but in the last few decades, the number of dormice has seriously declined, not just in this country, but across the world. There are several reasons for this. Loss of habitat, climate change, competition for food, and this area of the UK is now regarded as one of the last strongholds. So naturally, we want to help the creature to survive here as much as we can. The aim of the first stage of our project is simply to identify specific locations where dormice are still to be found and estimate the number we have here. So I'll just tell you a little bit about the creature in case you don't already know. The dormouse is a very attractive very small mammal. It only weighs about the same as a couple of pound coins. It's bright golden in color, and it has a thick furry tail and big black eyes. Now, you've probably all seen a picture of a dormouse, but you're very unlikely to have seen a real one because they're strictly nocturnal. Also, they hibernate from October to April, so it's not around at all for about half the year. So where is the dormouse to be found? Well, dormice need to be near a variety of trees and plants so they can be sure of a continuous supply of food throughout the spring and summer. They feed on flowers, pollen, fruit, insects, ripe nuts, things that are available in turn as the summer progresses. Here in the UK, the dormouse is most likely to live in places like hedgerows or woods or at the edges of farmland. So how do we find out exactly where dormice are? Well, as they're hard to spot, as I said, we have to use indirect methods. Instead of trying to see dormice themselves, we look for evidence of dormouse activity. Dormice eat hazelnuts, so we'll be looking for the shells that dormice have opened to get at the nut inside. 
A lot of wildlife species eat hazelnuts. It's not just dormice. But it's usually possible to tell which particular animal has opened a nut by looking at the marks on the shells. So now, for those of you who would like to help us carry out this survey, let me tell you exactly what to do. You'll need to get an identification sheet like this from us. Then you should spend time looking for hazelnut shells in the bottom of hedgerows or on the ground in woodlands. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 15 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 15 to 20. If you find one, use the identification sheet to try and establish what kind of creature has opened it. You'll see from the pictures on the sheet that different creatures do it in different ways. For example, you'll see that insects make a small hole in the shell, less than two millimeters across. Then there's another type of mouse called a wood mouse. Wood mice make a hole in the shell too, but they leave parallel tooth marks on the inner rim of the shell, as well as rough scratches on the surface. Thirdly, there are little mammals called voles. These creatures don't leave any marks on the surface, but they leave tooth marks on the inner rim of the hole. And these marks are neat and parallel, so they're fairly easy to identify. Then there are squirrels and birds. They both open the nuts, leaving hard shells that have got jagged edges. And finally, we have our dormice. They make a hole in the shell that has a smooth inner edge. And the tooth marks it leaves are on the surface, at an angle to the hole. And these are the ones we're looking for, of course. Firstly, if you do find any nuts which you think have been opened by dormice, you need to record their location as precisely as possible. You can use the grid references on a map, or you can sketch your own map. But if you do, be sure to include landmarks or road names. It's very important that we know exactly where the shells came from. Then, put the nut shells in a small container. Any kind will do, a film box or a matchbox. Anything that prevents them from being crushed in the post. And then finally, give them a label, just your name and contact details, and send them to Action for Wildlife. When we receive them, an expert will look at the shells to confirm your identification. The address to send them to is... That is the end of section two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Uh, it was very hard in the beginning of the 11 to 14. It was really, really confusing. Or not? No, 11 to 14, I just found in 13th dormice in the tunnel. That's what I found only one. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. they are in one yeah. conversation where we have to. You understand the questions here? Yeah, yeah. Uh, they were talking about the dormice and where they're living. Uh, where how... you can find them. Okay, yeah. let's just hear this one. I have noted answers, but I don't want to disclose it to you. Section mm -hmm. You will hear a woman talking on the radio about a project to conserve dormice in one area of the UK. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 14. Now, 
Now listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 14. Good morning and welcome to our weekly program about countryside matters. With me today, I have Jackie Lamerton. Jackie works for the nature organization Action for Wildlife and she's appealing for volunteers for a project she's organizing. So if you think you might be willing to help, please listen carefully. Jackie. Thank you. Yes, as you've just heard, I represent a charity called Action for Wildlife, which works to protect plants and animals. And I'm here today to talk about a project to save a type of mouse known as a dormouse. We can still find the dormouse in this area, but in the last few decades, the number of dormice has seriously declined, not just in this country, but across the world. There are several reasons for this. Loss of habitat, climate change, competition for food. And this area of the UK is now regarded as one of the last strongholds. So naturally, we want to help the creature to survive here as much as we can. The aim of the first stage of our project is simply to identify specific locations where dormice are still to be found and estimate the number we have here. So I'll just tell you a little bit about the creature in case you don't already know. The dormouse is a very attractive, very small mammal. It only weighs about the same as a couple of pound coins. It's bright golden in color and it has a thick furry tail and big black eyes. Now, you've probably all seen a picture of a dormouse, but you're very unlikely to have seen a real one because they're strictly nocturnal. Also, they hibernate from October to April, so it's not around at all for about half the year. So where is the dormouse to be found? Well, dormice need to be near a variety of trees and plants so they can be sure of a continuous supply of food throughout the spring and summer. They feed on flowers, pollen, fruit, insects, ripe nuts, things that are available in turn as the summer progresses. Here in the UK, the dormouse is most likely to live in places like hedgerows or woods or at the edges of farmland. So how do we find out exactly where dormice are? Well, as they're hard to spot, as I said, we have to use indirect methods. Instead of trying to see dormice themselves, we look for evidence of dormouse activity. Dormice eat hazelnuts, so we'll be looking for the shells that dormice have opened to get at the nut inside. A lot of wildlife species eat hazelnuts. It's not just dormice, but it's usually possible to tell. So I guess 11 to 14 will be heard. And if you get anything, send me. Otherwise, I'll be checking your remaining answers. Yeah, just a minute. Okay, 11 is not right, 12 is right, 13 not right, 14 not right, 15 not right, 16 right, 17 not right, 18, 19, 20 right. So basically when they're talking about like uh, the dome eyes, what they are saying that numbers have fallen and uh, they said as well as in the UK here, they have written here, but in the conversation they were saying uh, not in the UK, but across the world. So Dormas numbers have fallen across the world is our answer as well as in the UK. But here UK is in the second place in the conversation. UK first they said and then they said across the world as well. Okay. Then the Dormas are about heavy as couple of pound coins. Couple of pound coins that mean two pound coins, right? Yeah. And uh, you are most likely to have seen a Dormas in a picture, right? That's picture. what they have mentioned and that's near to the pound coins only. And the farmland and next to farmland, the answer is singular. Oh, okay. Yeah. And the 15 opened by wood mice, you see the option number E, 
what they say like opened up and there are scratches on the surface yeah it is opened by the wood mice so scratches on which figure you looking at scratches on the surface oh, it's only e okay and when they talking about the wools uh the wools what they are saying like uh, it got the uh, pallor uh, what we say these scratches uh, no nah, the this is what they are saying basically a is the answer and i hope you get that as well right yeah yeah 17 is like where what what we can consider as a dormice like this is the one is opened by the dormice the b1 oh, okay. so they said pallor scratches to the surface so okay. this is like pallor scratches to the surface as they want to mention because if you go after this one after selecting a right mm -hmm. obviously this is not the one Yeah. This is opened by a bird sparrow type of mammal. That what they have said. We disregarded that. Mm -hmm. So what we left with now, it's only B. B. Okay. So if you select A and A, E and A right, mm -hmm. you ultimately get B easily. So it's E, A and B. B. And this we understand. Record, container, and label them. Yeah. Okay. Let's move next. Okay, no, the D seven to thirty are here, right? Okay, this is the third section. Have a look on the question, and we'll be starting then. It's sort of classification and MCQ. Yeah. Now, which particular animal has opened a nut? If I'm a wood mouse, these creatures don't. They both open the nut at an angle to the hole. References on a map. Yeah. Life. Half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section three. Section three. You will hear two business studies students, Jack. Mm, what I thought. Just a second. Stopped playing. Preparing. First, you have some time to look at questions twenty-one to twenty-six. 
I don't want to play it here. Just a second. Okay, this is beginning of section. Section three. You will hear two business studies students, Jack and Sarah, talking to their tutor about a presentation they are preparing. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 26. Hello, you two. Have a seat. Okay. Um, so you're going to tell me about the presentation you're preparing for next week's marketing seminar, right? That's right. We've drafted this plan for you to look at. Okay. Thanks. Perhaps you could just talk me through it, could you? Uh, Sarah, do you want to begin? Yes. Uh, well, we're going to compare the websites of two bicycle companies. Right. And they're called Hills Cycles and Wheels Unlimited. Yes. And first of all, we've compared the content of each site and the presentation. Mm -hmm. Then we've done an evaluation of each one. Okay. And did you find much difference between the two websites, Jack? Quite a bit, yes. Wills Unlimited has a lot more pages for a start. Both companies show their catalogue. I mean, pictures of different models of bike with specifications. And prices? Yes, they're there too, although they list them in different ways. Hill Cycles have got them next to the pictures, and Wills Unlimited show them on a separate page. But Wills Unlimited advertises lots of other products connected with bikes, like helmets and clothing and tools. Yes, all kinds of things. And hill cycles? No, they only show the bikes themselves. Okay. Well, is there anything on the hill cycles website that Wheels Unlimited doesn't have? Not really. Yes, there is. It's got a little photo of the original shop and a paragraph about the history of the company. It's family owned. Oh, yes. I forgot about that. Right. Um, that's the content then. Mm -hmm. And you compared the functions of the two websites, did you? Yes. Hill Cycles doesn't have any facility for online ordering. You have to ring up to order something. That's the only way you can do it. Well, no. You can send off for a paper catalogue with an order form. Oh, yes, I suppose so. But with Wills Unlimited, you can order online or in the conventional ways. That's right. Fine. OK. And what about the presentation? Did you find any particular differences there or similarities? What about visuals? As I said, both the sites have got pictures and they're both quite attractive. But Wills Unlimited hasn't got any moving graphics. Yes. Hill Cycles has got an animated cartoon at the top of the home page. Right. Well, it looks as if you've got plenty to talk about. There are other things, too, but those are the main things we noticed. OK, well, you better stick to the most obvious differences because you've only got 10 minutes for the whole presentation, haven't you? Mm. And you said you're going to evaluate each site as well, didn't you? How are you going to do that? I mean, what criteria will you use? Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 27 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 27 to 30. We thought we'd use three criteria. How attractive each website is, how user-friendly it is, 
and how closely it targets its potential customers. Do you think that's okay? Sounds fine. But I'd look at the criteria in a different order if I were you. Because really, you've got to look at attractiveness and user-friendliness in relation to the people the website is aiming at. So I'd deal with that criterion first if I were you. Right. What about the timing? Have you thought of that? Ten minutes is very short, you know. Yes, we tried it out. <laughs> Several times. And we've decided to spend four minutes comparing the two sites, then three minutes evaluating them, and leave three minutes for questions. That's not really enough, but... Well, it sounds about right to me. You've got ten minutes altogether, and you've got to stick to that limit. It's good practice. And at least the audience won't have time to get bored. <laughs> <laughs> um, what visuals are you going to use? We're going to use PowerPoint and a flip chart as well. So we can show two things at once. For example, we're going to start by showing the home pages of each website, and we're going to put up a list of key features on the flip chart at the same time. Okay, and it's a joint presentation, so have you decided how you're going to share the work? Yes. At first we thought we'd keep taking it in turns to speak. Sarah would say a bit, then i take over, and so on. Then we thought we'd just divide it into two equal parts and do one part each. But it was all too complicated. So Sarah's going to do all the talking, and I'm going to manage the visuals and hope we can coordinate properly. It's the only way we can fit everything in. Well, good. You've obviously worked hard and you've been very careful with the details. Only one thing I would say. Make sure that you keep your visuals simple. I mean, if you're showing a list of key features, for example, you should make it as brief as possible. Just use bullet points and simple phrases, even single words. Your audience won't have much reading time. It's a classic mistake with seminar presentations to present so much information that the audience can't process it quickly enough, and they stop listening to what you're saying. Okay? Yes. Mm. Right, okay. And now let's talk about... Twenty-seven and thirtieth is incorrect. Twenty-seven and thirtieth. Thirty-eight. The thirty-eight would be B. Thirty, thirty, thirty. Yeah, the thirtieth will be B. No, thirtieth is C. Oh, thirtieth is sorry B, as you have mentioned C. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The thirtieth will be B. Uh, B. And thirty-seventh will be A. Neither A, neither B, it's C. Oh, is it? 27 says, according to the tutor, best criteria to for evaluating the website should relate to. So the answer you have given like A or B. Yeah. Appearance uh, and ease of use. But the actual answer is C, the target customer, according to tutor. But okay. they have focused on more on appearance and ease of usage yeah. to students. Okay. And, uh, and, 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 okay, let me say the answer. I'm going to be doing online. 21 is C, 22 is C, 23B, 24A, 25B, 26A, 27C, 28A, 29C, 30th B. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be the answer. And you see, this is classification, sort of. These are the MCQ. So the setting of the question yeah. is pretty much the same, and the all of the listenings you will be doing.
the last set fourth one here it goes they had made right so read the instruction as well questions these are all short answer question and uh, this is we have to do matching sort of Should I play it? Yes, please. Is the end of section three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section four. Section four. You will hear a lecturer talking about the way in which elephants communicate. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. In today's lecture, I'm going to continue the theme of animal communication, and I'm going to describe some of the latest research into the largest of all land animals, and that is the elephant, of course. Let me begin by briefly outlining the structure of elephant society. Elephants live in layered societies. The basic family unit is formed of small groups of adult females who are related to each other and their young of both sexes. Now the females remain in their families for life. They're highly social, but male elephants leave their families at about 14 years of age. They travel alone or congregate in small loose groups with other males, occasionally joining a family on a temporary basis. When males are ready to mate, they wander widely, searching for receptive females. The family unit, on the other hand, often contains three generations, and it can remain stable for decades or even centuries. Then, each family associates with between one and five other families, probably consisting of their more distant relatives. Scientists call these groups of families bond groups, and bond groups belong in turn to even larger groups called clans. So elephants have a complex social structure. And like other social animals, they have to be able to communicate. But what baffled early naturalists was their ability to communicate over long distances. So they set about researching this question. In one experiment, scientists fitted groups of elephants with radio tracking collars. 
and what they observed about their behavior really intrigued them because they found that there was some sort of coordination between families. For example, two separate family groups might move in parallel to each other, miles apart, and then change directions simultaneously, either turning or moving towards each other. Now, elephants have a keen sense of smell, which they use whenever they can. But smell alone couldn't account for these synchronized movements, because the wind often carries odors in the wrong direction. So the scientists concluded that the elephants were using their hearing instead, and attention then turned to the nature of elephant calls. In another experiment, scientists from Cornell University in America went to Etosha National Park in Namibia, and they produced a recording of calls made by a female elephant to potential mates. Then they broadcast it. And they did this from a van which was parked more than half a mile from a waterhole where several bull elephants were drinking. And two of these looked up spread their ears wide, and then crunched through the bush towards the loudspeakers. As you can imagine, the scientists may have been alarmed at this point, but the elephants marched straight on past them in their van in search of a female elephant. But the striking aspect of this experiment was that when they replayed their recording, neither the two scientists nor the rest of their team, who were filming from a nearby tower, could hear it. And that's because the sounds that they had replayed were below the lower threshold of human hearing. In scientific terminology, the sounds are infrasonic. Elephants can make these extremely low-pitched sounds because although they have a larynx or voice box that is similar to those of all other mammals, it's much larger. But what do the sounds mean? Scientists from Pittsburgh Zoo in the USA have classified certain infrasonic calls based on when these occur and how other elephants react to them. They found, for example, that when individual family members reunite after separation, they greet each other very enthusiastically, and the excitement increases with the length of time that they've been separated. They trumpet and scream and touch each other. They also use a greeting rumble. This starts at a low 18 hertz, hertz is a measurement of sound pitch, crests at 25 hertz, which is a level just high enough to be audible to humans, and then falls back to 18 hertz again. In another example, an elephant attempting to locate its family uses the contact call. This call has a relatively quiet low tone with a strong overtone which is clearly audible to humans. Immediately after contact calling, the elephant will lift and spread its ears and rotate its head as if listening for the response. The contact answer is louder and more abrupt than the greeting call, and it trails off at the end. Contact calls and answers can last for hours until the elephant successfully rejoins her family. A third type of call seems to represent a summons to move on. At the end of a meal, one member of a family moves to the edge of the group, typically lifts one leg, and flaps her ears. At the same time, she emits a let's go rumble, which arouses the family, and they start to move on. Finally, mating activity is associated with yet another group of calls. So, our understanding of elephant communication has increased considerably in recent years. However, even with the use of radio tracking collars, it's technically difficult to document the functions of long-range communication. So although scientists are aware that elephants may know the whereabouts and possibly the activities of other elephants that are several miles away, there may be a lot of subtle long-range interactions, which are still not evident. That is the end of Section 4. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
31 is wrong. It says females and the answer is adult females. Okay. 32, they called the groups as bond groups. And then yeah, I have written it. Some clan. Yeah, I have written that one. Okay, families, bond groups. I have written, but I thought like maybe the name of that no, one is. No, no, We have to go after the question, and question is, what is the group named? That family group known as that's bond groups. And uh, thirty-three is like coordination. It is wrong. Uh, coordination is the uh, I mean feature about the behavior of them. They noticed. Uh, when they track group of element elephants 34 is hearing that's right 35 is broadcast it yeah broadcast it yes so 35 when you write what did american scientists do with the recording of elephant calls so what they did to that broadcast it yeah what did the okay 36 is uh Okay, not there. Okay, a female elephant. What did the elephants in the experiment rush to find? A female elephant. I couldn't get the, the particular question in this one. Like, what did the elephants in the experiment so rush to They find? were doing an experiment. Female elephant. What? Yeah, they were doing an experiment. So, what did the elephants in that uh, doing? They started looking for a female elephant. So maybe the experiment and the way they're conducting it, that was the, and it is in the transcript. I tell you what it is. If you want to know about it. 36. I was trying to ask, uh, understand the question itself uh, before finding on it. The answer. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Cornell University experiment in Nambia, that were the, I guess there the answer came from. Uh, they produced a recording of calls made by a female elephant to potential mates, then they broadcast it, right? So mm. here in this only, you got the answer to 36. So what the uh, elephants in the experiment rush to find in the same 35 question, when we get the answer, 36 is there as well. Like they rush to find a female elephant when the scientist was doing that call experiment, broadcasting it. So that is, that is the answer there. And uh, what you have written for uh, 37? No. Nothing. No, uh, but uh, I was mixed up with the 36 and in that thing, I missed the 37 as well. Okay, so what scientists were unable to do with the recording they had made? So 37 answer is hear it. So they were not able to hear it, that recording. Hear it. Okay. Yeah, 39 to 40th is C, F and B. C. So you've written yeah, wrong B. for first two. So 40th is right. C, F, and B. Why it is C? Because it says begins and end at the same pitch. So greeting, yeah. begin and end at the same pitch. F is obviously contact call. They What they were saying, like they keep doing it for a longer period of time till the time they don't met each other. Contact call, right F? And okay. summons to move on. I couldn't understand the C still because, like, uh, I got it the F because I, I heard the same thing about the long uh, 39? period. 39? 38. 38 C. Yeah, but. So like, you find it? C, because they were uh, saying that about the hertz, they were fluctuating the hertz in their volume. So, what the question is, like, how the greeting call, like, yeah. type of the call. So we have to find out what what is the description of that sort of a call. And uh, uh, so you have marked what answer G for that, I G. guess. Yeah. But it is actually C. Okay, let's say it. Okay. Greeting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
Okay, they found, for example, that when individual family member reunite after separation, they greet each other very enthusiastically and the excitement increases with the le length of time and they have uh, that they have been separated. They trump, scream, touch each other. They also use a greeting, rumble. Yeah. This starts at low 18 hertz is a measurement of the sound pitch. Crest at 25 hertz, which is a level just high enough to be audible to human and then falls back to 18 hertz again. Yeah. So you see, it begins and, and, and at the same pitch, which is 18 hertz at the beginning, it goes up to 20 hertz, which are unable for human to listen to, and then it's falling back at the same level, which is 18 hertz. So beginning and ending at the same pitch is C. Okay, I I have used so that continuously. G yeah. continuously fluctuate in volume, then it is not a starting or ending value must be there. There should be like 18, 19, 25, then 18, then. So that's called fluctuation. Fluctuation okay. is not like starting at same time and ending. While fluctuating, maybe ending is decreased or maybe ending is increased. It can't be same. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, it's C. And then F, yeah, we understand that well. And then the last one summons to move on. Uh, yeah, that is B. Is you do, that is uh, B. Yeah. Yeah. You, you have written that right. Yeah. That's usually accompanied by leg movement. They lift their leg up and it's a call to move on. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. So all together, how much you got out of 40? <laughs> Very less. With how much? Um, only. Twenty-five? Yep. Okay, it's uh twenty-five. Twenty-five is six for you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's less. Yeah. It starts at 23 for the listening when you get six band. Yeah. So when you are 26, it will be 6.5. But that's okay. So you understand this is the particular exact how the test can be in the exam. Yeah. So some small errors, just like singular, plural, like you did. Remember the farmland question? Yeah. Uh, you're not you getting meant... that right. So that's make your band from 6.5 to 6. So yeah. It's very important for looking those tiny uh, details. And, yeah. Uh, and, and, and yeah, MCQ usually they just, whenever this repeating the same text, right? Yeah. So probably that's not the answer. This is a trap. That's yeah. what I told you. Yeah, you told in the lecture. Yeah, the and you have to look for these, these traps. It's not for only knowing them, but actually assessing them while in the practice sessions. Yeah. So nothing is like whenever you're picking an answer here, mm -hmm. they are not speaking in the same way it is written here. It's changed. Synonym. Yeah. For parents and ease of use, we clearly hearing that. Yeah. So we pick that as answer. They right? have mentioned but about we... the target customers as well. Uh -huh. uh, uh, they have, yeah, yeah, they're talking about the uh, base of a uh, base should be the targeted customer. The mm. base that means basic criterion. Yeah. So that we bear, maybe you missed because you mentioned A or B, maybe. And uh, just because this question, you missed this one as well, which is Excellent. quite easy to get. So not to be lingering on a question sticking out there. Nobody's going to play back the audio for you. So no fun. So even we say family group known, so that must be that group name. So that group known is as bond groups. So if you are, what the, those bond groups are then called, if you're writing that as an answer, ultimately it will be wrong because that's not into the question. Yeah, I have written like, uh, because I have written on in the Yeah, page, why I'm the pointing these errors of yours? Because these comes out to be three questions, suppose. Yeah. So if it's 25, 26, 7 and 8 and 8 is the bar where it starts uh, 7, right? I mean 6.5, sorry, 6.5, like yeah. like mm. so mm. 6 and 6 point, there is a huge difference in that. Of course, yeah. 
So these tiny errors cost us the same amount of the marks that what we discussed earlier. Yeah. And yeah, slowly, steadily, definitely will improve. And when we got those pictures and things, so we have to pay more concentration in any case. When it was B, they were saying that um, on the at a, surface. No, at an equal angle. Angle. That yeah. what yeah. they said. So equal yeah. is like there. These all are at equal angle. That's oh, yeah. how we can get answer. And these are the parallel lines. That's why it's with walls, right? That's the oh, okay. surface the scratches here. So these are the minimum small details maybe, but actually helpful to find answer. Okay. And here also you get, you didn't get this. Yeah, but, uh, I was here like Newtown because she mentioned I was uh, coming from the Newtown and he, uh, she already mentioned about the half of the kilometers approach going further and you will see crossroad and the uh, signals so i was confused between a and g and that's I, I... No, no no this is a sharp bend she said when she yeah. said i was new new town leaving the new town there is a sharp bend this is the sharp bend yeah. and then do you see for 0.5 kilometer given already given so that's half a kilometer so that's what half a kilometer there is another uh, crossing with the traffic lights in it okay so that makes it g so you yeah. see these three, four question, if you're getting them right, ultimately 28 to 29 and then 30th is the seven. All right, that's uh, for the listening today. Yeah. And uh, showing you the slides to the writing letter. Just a second. So it is a small slide show type of if, uh, how much time we have okay. Have you gone through these slides for the letter writing? Yep. Uh, well, uh, will this be finished within uh, five or ten minutes? Yeah, this. Okay, so the journal writing, a quick, quick review for the letter writing here. The first thing uh, we have to understand here is the marking into the letter. The letter, it is taken as it is three band and S is the double the weightage, which is six band. So the three marks are easy to get if we can provide the examiner in whatever content he, she, after when it comes to the letter writing. And there are some few technical things that we must include into the letter writing to get those scores. And uh, as I said, it is easy to get letter scores comparative to the essay one. So first we have to see what is the tone of the letter, how I am writing that in a formal tone or a semi-formal tone or an informal tone, because that is the first parameter your task or your letter is judged on. And then, when you understand that, you should be picking up the sentence structures according to that. If it's a formal semi, you will be picking up the passive voice pattern to write your sentences. If it's a informal, maybe the active voices are fine with that. And um, we have to discuss the each bullet point given. Leaving anyone will be reduced mark. So you are explaining each and every bullet point. Ultimately, you are uh, moving uh, towards the required band score here. And how you are starting your letter and how you are signing it off, this is again two technical things which they will be looking for. So if it's a, a formal letter, so there will be a beginning with the dear sir or ma'am or dear with the surname, 
right if it's a semi formal maybe i can start with the first name of the person as well mr and first name if it's a informal letter i can write the uh, name of my friend as well not with the salutation it is fine and how i will be ending my letters with the formal letters we have to end our finish off our letter with yours faithfully with the semi you can write yours sincerely and with the informal letters we can write uh, best wishes warm regards lots of love and um, you know any salutation according to the uh, letter we are uh, posting to and at the end definitely our grammar and vocabulary also play a vital role in deciding our score so if your grammar is fine the sentence formation and uh, obviously the way the tone of the sentence is appropriate as per the letter you will be getting score for that and if you are doing any vocabulary errors just like you are repeating vocabulary or you are not utilizing the accurate vocabulary as per the situation you want to describe that will be again make you losing scores here so these are the things to keep in mind while we are writing the letter and uh, we got 20 minutes to write the letter so we must be having a plan of typing the letter in 15 minutes in our mind because we writing 150 words it's not big deal to type your letter in 150 word and why 5 minutes we are saving when we are looking at the letter we have to read it understand it it takes time then we have to six uh, then we have to uh, fix that like how i am uh, going to continue with the ideas in the letter like what story i'm going to frame for this letter that ultimately needs time right so this is how we should be having at least 5 6 minute with us and at the end of course have when you finish typing you have to proofread your letter as well which again requires at least 2 to 3 minutes so that's why we must be finishing off the typing work in 13 to 15 minutes when we are practicing so that we are not running out of the time leaving any chances that our answers or our possible whatever we have written uh, is there any uh, mistake like technical vocabulary vocabulary type of gramma grammatical error punctuation error that we unnecessarily losing marks for so these are the possible situation given on which the usually letter based on so the complaining letters application resignation letters inviting a friend colleague to join you at a social event letters making a request sort of letter making formal arrangements explaining something to a friend or colleague type of letters and making an apology letter now knowing the categories of the letter we may ask to write about will also help us to find the appropriate vocabulary for the letter writing purpose as well the task one is more about how well you are presenting your ideas and definitely how well you are embedding everything with the perfect vocabulary so when you know that that the formal arrangement letters are the common in the ielts writing task 1 general so you must be finding few vocabulary words which can gel up easily with the any formal arrangement letter same goes to the complaining letter resignation letter application letter request letter apology letter dissatisfaction letter right so these all sort of vocabulary words will help you and it's a one time work you remember few words for some such letters but whatever category of the letter those words are uh, words are going to fix in there right so this will help you to get more marks on that parameter and we have some common problems and solution in the letter writing so knowing the main purpose of the letter if it's difficult for you to find it out so just uh when you are typing start typing the actual letter after the beginning of that you must be writing the first paragraph as a introductory paragraph which is telling you straight away like what this letter is about so the first paragraph will be containing about okay this is this is a letter in regards to some complaint you want to make now this letter is a dissatisfaction in regards to the services you availed and uh, this letter in relation to the uh, denying to uh, an invitation given to you to come over some occasion or social event so that first sentences of the letter 
or i would say the first paragraph and it will be only having one sentence which will be introductory it will be telling you okay what is the purpose of this letter so it is not uh, difficult to describe the purpose of the letter then we have to cover each and every bullet point and how we can cover that and make sure that we doing that that we are writing separate paragraph for every bullet point in given in the letter so if there are three bullet points who me making three paragraphs including sometime intro is also included in that that bullet point then three if not then four right and uh, <clears throat> we always write our letter in paragraph pattern and skipping a line between each paragraph right because the presentation and the way you are typing the answer it matters as well spacing must be taken care of so the tone that must be used uh, correct so as i told you this is the best way uh, to keep a check on our tone passive active voices and it works wonder with the letter writing if you find letter is difficult to understand use the structure i advise below and keep your idea simple the uh, structure i'll be just showing you up but keeping your idea simple will help you to not to complicate the letter as well situation described in it as well and definitely it will help you to pick up the fine vocabulary which can gel up easily with the letter writing so you beginning your letter as per the category of the letters just as given in this slide formal you don't know name like this formal you know name like this and semi formal dear first name and in kind regards and informal dear first name best wishes this is the letter structure you will be using to write your letter for starting as obviously this uh, will be varying according to the letter so say it's a formal letter dear sir ma'am paragraph 1 i'm writing with regard to why you are writing this letter that what you will be adding in here the paragraph 2 3 and 4 or maybe 2 3 it will be the bullet points and supporting details to the bullet point so maybe they are asking why you are asking for a leave that is the second bullet point so explain that why you are asking that and give the supporting details so maybe the two or three sentences you are writing in this paragraph same goes to uh, if it is not provided what will be the consequences so maybe you are ex explaining those things into the third paragraph and giving the supporting detail and after that no bullet point is there so no more paragraphs if there make another one again at the last before closing it down signing it off you will be like to add one sentence you have to add like what do you want or what are you expecting the other person uh, response how early how late how quick how uh, how it need to be so i look forward to hearing from you that mean you want this guy to write a letter to you an answer to you so that's it let that's the sentences you have to write one sentence you have to write after the bullet point description then close it off according to the uh, type of the letter now these are the few opening of the letters and requesting letter sort of and uh, ending for those as well like beginning can be with these phrases adding to whatever the content of the letter topic of the letter is so i am writing this letter with regard to this is a common one and it can gel up with any one if you don't get anything specific just go with this one i am bringing i am writing to bring to your attention so this explain itself what it is heading towards i am writing to inform you that i am writing to express my dissatisfaction with right i would be grateful if you would i would like you to i am entitled to request you that i am wondering if it would be at all possible to i would like to suggest that i look forward to hearing from from you this will go with every letter if you don't know any other sentence for the ending i look forward to receiving your response i await your prompt service i thank you for your consideration please respond at the earliest convenience so these are the uh, few examples of how you can begin writing the introductory paragraph with the phrases if it suppose a requesting or a suggestion type of the letter how you can begin it in those cases and how you can end your letter with the appropriate closing sentence as well <clears throat> what you expect from the other person finally idea should be relevant 
the relevancy matters here the whatever the content of the letter according to that you should be uh, describing the points in the letter uh they, they should be exactly relevant to the content and uh, it's not like that they have to be really amazing out of the world out of the box maybe no so simple ideas work here just routine life pick any ideas as we working we studying we uh, maybe uh, you know we just taking care of the family we operating a store maybe so we got a lot of examples around from our own life from other people life so those work fine with the letter writing never ever use the any abbreviation in the letter writing lol omg or uh, any sort of abbreviation you're not supposed to write it and uh, always use uh, the full word if you want to write something in the letter even if it's an informal letter as well and you are referring to uh, a friend as well still you can't do that and uh, if you are not sure of the complex sentences in the letter do not use them keep it to simple or compound follow 100% rule so whatever you are writing that should be 100% correct the sentence grammar wise right if complex are making it complicated for you you're not sure of the sentence formation to be correct then don't follow it and always leave yourself 2 to 3 minute to cross check to proofread uh, for the spellings for the grammar for the spacing error for the punctuation and uh, yeah these are the things you need to check and obviously and if you have followed every uh, technical parameter completely or not and finally have someone check your writing so that you can do you can write one letter one essay which you think this is the best uh, response possible from my side and you can send it to pte@ccar.com.au and uh, i'll be giving a feedback through that email to you for that letter and essay and you have your windows to improve and uh, definitely if any query still persist you can come to the class and ask your queries for sure right so that is the end we covered up the listening basics or listening test of course with the basics and the tip strategies and then we have completed today the letter uh basics like what are the basics of the letter and uh, tomorrow we'll be uh, talking about the next module for the for this week right so that's all for today and uh, as you know uh this class is provided by sika and if you have got any query in relation to the class in relation to the migration counseling education counseling canada migration process you can call on this number or maybe you can step into the any of the offices of the sika and uh, we got office in melbourne sydney adelaide brisbane so wherever you feel wherever you are residing in you can come over to the office and you can avail the services i'm mentioning here for free and the counselors itself they got lots of year of experiences the migration counseling as well well experienced with the uh, everything and one of the agent keep we keep posting up all the update regarding to the changes in the visa processes or the pr pathways or which uh, particular uh, uh, cities or states are opening their uh, things for the pr processes or pr take file taking so everything is being discussed on the facebook page as well so you can like that page and keep receiving the updates and keep yourself updated and if you can share your visa expiry dates do share with us we'll be sending a reminder for that as well when it's going to due because some cases students forget that and then it is a huge problem so ultimately this is a uh, you know we just keep you updated regarding like within week it going to be finish up so that you can think of the possible uh, uh the further option what you are whatever you are after and definitely we're going to help you in that as well all right so that's all for today so i'm ending this session i hope you have a lovely evening ahead and keep practicing definitely 8777 is no big deal students actually achieve that but for yes you have to be in the classes regularly and of course come up with your queries and questions so that everything is clear to you and then only you can score those score okay i'm ending the session now goodbye take care guys see you tomorrow